We, before we start the series, as we're getting ready to head to Pentecost Sunday, and we begin to deal with some things that is going to help us lead up to Pentecost Sunday. Then, of course, on last Sunday was Mother's Day, and the first day gave a tremendous message amen. on the personalities of a mother. Amen. 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 We thank God for that. And so this Sunday, we're going to pick right back up where we left off in dealing with Pentecost Sunday and the Holy Ghost. And so why don't you look at your neighbor and say, let's talk about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Tell them again, let's talk about the Holy Ghost. If you have your Bibles, go to me to the book of Acts. Chapter 2, beginning at the 15th verse. Mm -hmm. Acts 2 and 15. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And it reads, For these are not drunken as ye suppose. See, it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaids. I will pour out in those days of my spirit. Amen? Amen. This particular scripture is happening on actually the day of Pentecost. Mm. And the, God had just blessed the church with the power or the indwelling brother of the Holy Ghost. And with that indwelling, Peter got up with boldness declare this scripture. And so Joel, back in the Old Testament, said that this was going to happen. And when it says, my spirit, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen? For you see, we believe, and this is backed up by the Bible, that God is there's one God, but He exists in three persons God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and then God the Holy Spirit. When you begin to research the Word, you find out that God the Father sits on the throne. Yes. Jesus, God the Son, sits at His right hand. And the Holy Spirit has been dispatched here on earth. To help us. Go ahead, sir. See, if we could do it on our own, we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If we could stay fit and do everything right and didn't need any help, then we would be okay. But how many of us can testify that just trying to do this thing on my own ain't working? That's right. That's right. Trying to be good on my own ain't working. I need a power on the inside that can keep me when things get difficult. Yes. God, knowing that, sent down the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now the Holy Spirit walks, is on the earth working in us, on us, and for us. When it comes to salvation, the Holy Spirit draws us to God. He convicts us of our sin. And it does the supernatural work of causing us to be born again. Go ahead, sir. See, the Bible declares that when we come to God, He's the one that's drawing us. Uh -huh. And then once we get to Him, the Holy Spirit is the one that makes us realize we're in our sin and convinces us of our sins. And at the same time, begins to do the supernatural work on the inside to turn our spirit where our spirit man is born again. And it's the Holy Spirit that does that work yes. for us. 
Yes. 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 So today we want to get a better understanding of who the Holy Ghost is, what he's doing, and why he's here. And the best way to get a better understanding of that is to see what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. So turn with me, if you would, to the Gospel according to John, the 14th verse, the 14th chapter, but I'm sorry. John 14 and 15. New Testament, the fourth Gospel, Matthew, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. John 14, beginning at the 15th verse. When you have it, say amen. Amen. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I, this is Jesus talking, I will pray the Father and he should give you another comforter. That comforter being the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, still talking about the Holy Ghost. Who the world cannot receive him because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus here is talking to his disciples. And Jesus had been with his disciples for the last three years. And he's letting them know, I got to go. I'm about to die. I'm about to be crucified. And after I'm crucified, I'm going to be risen again after three days. And then I'm going up to heaven. But Jesus was letting them know, I'm not going to leave you down here by yourself. Because I know you need a comforter. And the Amplified Bible, when it begins to read, when it try to translates the comforter, it says counselor, helper, interceder, advocate, strengthener, and stand by. Mm -hmm. All of that is what the Holy Ghost is, is what that word comforter means. And so Jesus is saying, I got to leave, but I'm not going to leave you by yourself. You're going to need some help to be able to withstand all the temptations of life. You're going to need some help to be able to go through life and live for me the way I want you to live. So I'm going away, but I'm going to send the comforter back, the Holy Spirit, who's going to be your counselor, your helper, your interceder, your advocate, your strengthener, and your standby. Many people say, I feel by myself. I feel like I'm all alone. But you're not all by yourself. You're not all alone. Because the Holy Spirit is in the realm. And he is all over the place. And he wants to abide on you and in you to help you make it through difficult times. You can't make it through by yourself. Go ahead, sir. Many people have said, I'm going to wait till I get right before I start living for God. You'll be waiting a long time. Because <laughs> you can't get right on your own. That's right. And even after you get saved, you need keeping power to keep you saved. Because the temptations of life, and you are still in this flesh, and this flesh does not die just because you give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, this flesh still wants to do its own thing. Still has some desire. Still has some feelings. Still hopes at some things like it wants it and wants to go after them. And the only thing that's going to keep you is your mind being renewed in God and the Holy Spirit being your keeper and your God. Yes, go ahead, preach. Too many people have tried to do it on their own and have failed and said living for God is too hard because you're trying to do it on your own ability and your own power. God never designed for you to do it like that. If when I get saved, I would go straight to heaven, I wouldn't have a problem because then I wouldn't be in this flesh. But as long as I'm on this earth, as long as I'm in this flesh, there will be temptations that tempt me to the very point that I want to give up. But God has a comforter that wants to live on the inside of me to give me the strength not to. Yield to the temptation. The Amplified, that same verse reads, If you really love me, you would keep, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, a counselor. The Holy Spirit. 
afraid as a counselor. Uh -huh. He wants to tell you what to do and how to do it and which way to go and what not to go. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is a helper. He's there to help you. When you're down and out and feel like you can't make it on your own, the Holy Spirit is a helper. Right, He's an interceder. Yes, he, he intercedes on our behalf to the Father. Uh -huh. The Bible says when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit begins to intercede for us and begins to talk to God for us yes. and begins to let God know, God, they in trouble. They need this, they need that. And God says, go ahead and give it to them. The Holy Spirit is an interceder. He's an advocate for us. He's the one that's pleading our case. Mm -hmm. He's a strength when we feel like we can't make it and feel like going in the tower. He'll come and strengthen us. Yeah. And then he's our standby. Mm -hmm. He stands by us when nobody else can stand by us. He's with us when nobody else is with us. And that's why, as a believer, you may feel all alone, but you got to come to the realization of the revelation of the word. You are never alone when you are a child. But who said they would? Mm -hmm. Loved ones may not be there, but who said they would? Uh -huh. 